Korea. But first, my opening statement. Donald Trump has launched a new era in American history that will last for decades. It's called Americanism. And as he continues his world journey to announce our agenda of America first, the safety and security of her citizens, her allies, and her interests here and abroad, the left, both here and across the globe, are doing everything they can to destroy both his vision and our way of life. We finally have a leader who understands the need to take care of us, to do what's in America's interest. Other countries acting like children, refusing to leave mommy and daddy's basement, should be on notice. You can no longer despise us, take advantage of us, and reap the benefits of our largesse. But like spoiled children, they continue to kick and scream. This week, Warren Wilhelm Jr., also known as New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, raced off to Hamburg, Germany, to team up with the anarchists protesting the G20 summit and President Trump in particular. Protests marked by anti-cop, anti-American, and anti-Trump violence, looting and bonfires. 200 police officers injured some of them seriously. Today, de Blasio headlined a protest rally entitled Hamburg Shows Attitude, while we taxpayers foot the bill for his security. And it's not bad enough that de Blasio jets off to join those protesting our president and capitalism, but he does so in the shadow of the assassination of a 12-year New York City police officer, Mia Sotis Familia, a 48-year-old mother of three, simply sitting in her police vehicle when she was shot and killed execution-style by another cop hater. And while New York City, still reeling from the death of its third female police officer killed in the line of duty, instead of attending the graduation, of 524 recruits about to enter the danger zone, no doubt anxious and fearful and in need of reassurance from the city's leader, Bozo de Blasio shirks his responsibilities, jets off to help lead the protest of those who resist law and order and authority. No comfort or solace to the families and loved ones watching those young recruits get a badge and a gun. De Blasio, he's more interested in establishing his street creds with the hard left cop-hating socialist, Trump-hating anarchists, sneaks off to join the rioters one day after the shooting with delusions of being worthy of the international stage. None of this surprising, since de Blasio's anti-cop sentiments are deep-rooted. In 2014, when two cops were assaulted and seriously injured on the Brooklyn Bridge as protesters chanted, what do we want, dead cops? When do we want them? Now? He called the protesters throwing garbage cans and bottles at police, peaceful protesters. He normalized police hatred, telling us that he told his son to be cautious of police. And it was in this climate and cop-hating protests that two New York City police officers, Wen Jen Liu and Rafael Ramos, were assassinated in their own squad car. It was a resentment of the de Blasio sentiment so deep at the Liu and Ramos funerals that members of the NYPD and cops from around the country turn their backs on de Blasio. And to the tens of thousands in law enforcement who will come from around the country to attend the funeral of yet another slain officer, this time Mia Sotis Familia on Tuesday, my message to you is do unto others as they do unto you. Do exactly what you did after the deaths of Officer Lou and Ramos. Turn your backs on this anti-Trump, leftist, socialist, cop-hating mayor. Do it for me. And that's my open.
Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter, hashtag Judge Janine. And joining me now is former congressman from Utah and current Fox News contributor, Jason Chaffetz. Good evening. Uh, do I still call you congressman? Oh, you can call me Jason. Call me whatever you want, Judge. Uh, no, I get it. Uh, it's good to have you on tonight, Jason, and welcome Thanks. to the Fox family. All right. So, right now, what I'm concerned about is the message to law enforcement, what has happened in terms of the, the normalization of cop hatred. Well, look, there's a, there are a lot of reasons why Donald Trump became the president of the United States, and I think the, the law enforcement component was a big part of it. President Trump went over to, to Europe and talked about putting America first, made in America, American exceptionalism. Then you have the mayor of New York City go over there and say that Donald Trump as the president doesn't represent the United States of America. I mean, that is so infuriating and so fundamentally totally wrong. It is an embarrassment to this country. I can't believe that the citizens of New York City put up with this guy uh, <laughs> in doing that. It just undercut the president, and it should never have ever happened. Well, you know what's interesting, uh, uh, Congressman, is the fact that, I'm calling you Congressman, that his press person said it is important that American leaders uh, I assume he's talking about de Blasio, confront head-on, locally and around the world, the damaging rhetoric and policy stances of the Trump administration. I mean, as if he thinks this guy should be on the world stage. And by the way, one of those popular newspapers in New York says, de Blasio, don't come back. Yeah, I saw that. The New York Post, I think they, I think they actually got it right. Look, you had a, a, a police officer assassinated. You have 500-plus new cadets coming into the system, and the mayor is running off to join a protest where you have literally these anarchists who are fighting and hitting and trying to, to cause damage to police officers who are just trying to create peace. And Donald Trump is over there as the president of the United States supporting our NATO allies, talking about the need to fight ISIS, trying to squelch the, uh, the uprising that's happening in North Korea. All of these things that America does believe in, and the New York mayor is over there leading the protests so, of those that are fighting the cops, causing more than 200 people, police officers in cops. Germany, to have to go to the hospital. So what do we do about this? Well, you got to draw attention to it. Just, it's infuriating. It's absolutely wrong. And you know what? It's not just a New York City issue. Even us out here in Utah, and I'm sure all across the country, are absolutely embarrassed by this mayor taking it on to himself, thinking he represents the United States of America. <laughs> he does not represent the values of the United States of America. Well, not only does he not represent the values of the United States, but he's working against those values. Yeah. He doesn't believe in capitalism. He thinks that he's this socialist leader. And what's amazing is, you know, he held until 90 minutes before he left the fact that he was, you know, blowing town. Uh, uh, to go to Germany. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's very secretive and he's very cagey about who he is and what he's doing. What do you think this guy thinks he's ultimately going to end up? I don't know. I would love to know. Who paid for that trip? Where did he stay? I, I don't think he was sitting back in coach eating peanuts uh, along the way. Uh, well, I, I, he's, I, saying, he's saying that the organization paid for him to go there, but we taxpayers are paying for his security detail. We sent four there uh, about five days ago, and there's another four traveling him with him, so he's got eight security detail we're paying for it, and also his whole detail, the press people, you know, all of those guys were paying for. So, you know, it's—but yeah. it's, uh, let me ask you this. When Donald Trump says uh, law enforcement and the military did a spectacular job in Hamburg, everybody felt totally safe despite the anarchists, what do you think he can do coming back home to help the police in this country? Well, look, I, I think his mere presence has totally helped the Border Patrol, uh, the Secret Service, uh, the law enforcement community at large. Uh, Donald Trump has said, look, we're going to get more resources, more effort behind you. We love you. We're committed to you. Um, and that has resonated. You can feel the difference. That, that it's just 
it is palatable how much better it is with Donald Trump because he talks about putting America first only to have the mayor of New York City go out and say, well, that doesn't represent the United States of America. Are you kidding me? It is amazing. Jason Chaffetz, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. President Putin and I have been discussing various things, and I think it's going very well. We've had some very, very good talks. Uh, we're going to have a talk now, and obviously that will continue. But we look forward to a lot of very positive things happening for Russia, for the United States, and for everybody concerned. And it's an honor to be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, sir. Я очень рад с вами встречаться, и мы с вами обсуждали уже целый ряд вопросов, и будем продолжать обсуждать целый ряд, ряд вопросов. И я с нетерпением ожидаю а, такой возможности, я думаю, что это все будет позитив как для России, для Соединенных Штатов, так и для всех. И для меня большая честь с вами встречаться. Уважаемый господин президент, мы с вами несколько раз разговаривали по телефону. Your Excellency, Mr. President, we spoke over the phone with you several times. И по очень важным вопросам двусторонней повестки дня и международной. Конечно, телефонных разговоров недостаточно. Well, phone conversation is never enough, definitely. Если мы хотим решать вопросы позитивные двусторонних, двусторонней повестки дня и наиболее важные острые вопросы международной повестки, то, конечно, такие встречи лично необходимы. But if we want to have the positive developments in bilaterals and be able to resolve most acute international topics and issues, definitely we need personal meetings. Я очень рад с вами познакомиться, господин президент, и надеюсь, что, как вы сказали, наша встреча принесет позитивный результат. And I'm delighted to be able to meet you personally, Mr. President, and I hope, as you have said, our meeting will yield positive results. We will use for that yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.